Hello and welcome to Betfred's Football Show. Paul Parker is alongside me. Let's start with the North London Derby. It's the 192nd edition and Arsenal are top of the league, Parks. They are, and we we'll say at the moment they deserve to be. They've been winning games when it's mattered, when it matters, I should say. Then, But you do look at them and you still see the old bit of Arsenal there sometimes. They've had a little bit of good fortune, but anybody at the top of a top of the um the ladder sometimes you do need that little bit of good luck and and I think that you know the major bit the key to it is Jesus isn't it he's the key yeah. without him I think we'll see the normal Arsenal but he makes a difference for him because he goes deep and he starts play he gets to the top line he holds the ball up as anybody six foot ten would do he brings people into the game he's a difference why they're scoring goals making them he's scoring them so they are where they are because they deserve to be there. He's not been on an Arsenal losing side when he's scored a goal as Jesus is 72 to get the first goal, even money to score any time. So Arsenal around about the even money mark. Uh, the draw is 9 to 2, and uh, Spurs are about 9 to 4. Interestingly, the last 16 have actually gone to the home side. So last year it was 3 0 to Spurs at the uh, new Spurs Stadium, and it was 3-1 to Arsenal at the Emirates. So home advantage seems to be a real key in this game now. It certainly is, and but you look at this one, and both of them are going into it in positions they've never been before, really. And plus, as well, their run of form is as good as each other in certain ways. It's, you know, it's close, marginal. But I still look at I think I've got to go with Arsenal, just by the way it seems to be going with them. And obviously, <laughs> the stats say it is the home side, but you look at Arsenal... Without even hearing those stats, I would have, I would have still gone with Arsenal just for the fact of, at the moment in time, <clears throat> they're up high and going. Give us a prediction. Of I'm going to go Arsenal. I'm going to say Arsenal are going to win this three-one. Three-one Arsenal. Let's just have a word on Spurs, unbeaten so far this season, in the third position. Obviously, if they won on Sunday, uh, sorry Saturday lunchtime, that'd be a huge boost. But where do you think Spurs are at? I still think they're. They're not where Conte would like them. I think there's still a few areas where I think he would like to improve. I think they have been fortunate. Their performances haven't been great and they've just got over the line. <clears throat> and just I'm um, reliant maybe on the fact of maybe Harry Kane nicking the goal. His form hasn't been great this season, but he, it's the goals that save him when it comes down to form. Harry Kane, he scores a goal. It changes the whole complex of everything, the game, and obviously how people foresee his performance. But... You look at them, they, they look likely to concede quite a bit, in my opinion. For me, Romero, for their defence, is key. He's their main, main defender. Uh, as well as being, uh, obviously, a fantastic uh, forward, he scored the, the most goals in a North London derby. 13, Harry Kane. 9-2 to two to score first, 5-4 to four to score uh, any time. Right, uh, before we talk a little more about Spurs, let's hear from a former Spurs player... He kept goal for a number of years for him, Paul Robinson. Well, this is the most exciting one for a long time. I know we look forward to the North London derbies every time that they come around. But I think now with Arsenal where they are in the league and Tottenham changed and their, their fortunes transformed as they are, as they are uh, the squad that they've got, I think this is going to be a real test and a benchmark as to see where both squads are at, if you like. I think Arsenal's start to the season has been exceptional. Um, to, to get the haul of points that they had. I don't think they even, their manager could have wished for that many points at this stage and be ahead of Manchester City. So I think this for them is a real test, uh, as it is for Spurs, to see how far they've come. And I think this is the closest match that the two teams have been in a number of years now. You know, there was that period of Arsenal dominance, then the Tottenham dominance. And I think for the last few years, you know, Tottenham have dominated that derby. But now it's, it's the closest it's ever been. So it's going to be a real, real uh, head-to-head. Robinson, and basically, he just echoed what you said. It's a benchmark, this game, for both teams, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I suppose Arsenal failed their last benchmark going away to Old Trafford. So it's another one from, isn't it? North London Derby Spurs at home. It certainly is. And that's, Arsenal can't afford, in my opinion, to lose it after what happened at Old Trafford when they had a bit of control there and a little bit of naivety, poor defending. Maybe the three substitutions at one time may have cost them that third goal, the one that kind of killed the game off when they was wide open at the back after making a treble substitution. But this, for them, it's important for them now, especially in this game as well, to go, if they can go and win this game with a, with a good performance, will give them major satisfaction as well. You just don't know. This, this season is a little bit unknown because 
stopping halfway well, for got a, a World Cup round yeah, the corner, of course, yeah, yeah. for a you know, five, six week break or whatever it is. And so all of a sudden, if you can get yourself in a good position, it's going to make a difference when you come back, a big, big difference. And it could be for the fact that Arsenal could have their best season in a long, long time. 3-1 Arsenal is Parks' prediction. Uh, right, it's 12.30 Saturday lunchtime. It's first versus third, and it's for North London Derby. Really looking forward to that. But let's turn our attention now onto the Manchester Derby, which is 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Just write your score down there. Arsenal <laughs> 3, Spurs 1. So, the Manchester Derby. Uh, well, I think City are going great guns. I know they're uh, in uh, second place. Uh, I've had a, a couple of draws, but I still think City are going great guns. Yeah, no one can disagree with that. You you see their performances in games, and right when they're if they're losing or winning, you just know how good they are. And when they are losing a game, everyone's on edge. Even I can imagine to be the most partisan supporter ever. While when City, you're one nil up and they're in control of the ball you are panicking, you are worried. There's no great belief in your own side because they are that good with the ball. So you look at it and you have to say in this one, I don't think there's many United fans who are believing that Manchester United can go down and win. Under Oli, Oli had a way of playing against them. Yeah, maybe, I mean, they've won maybe, four of the last seven at the Etihad in yeah, the Premier League. Yeah, a little bit maybe by more by luck than judgment in certain ways and key players being on song at that right at that right time, that counter-attacking style, Martial and Rashford. That's where the strength was coming at the Etihad. But this time around, I look at them and the two centre-halves of United are going to be very, very important. It's about them, because they're not going to really... It's about how they're going to handle Haaland. Are they going to go fire with fire? Yeah. Or are they going to go with a little bit of common sense and use a bit of guile? You know, to be tactical about the way they deal with him. Because if they go to fight him, as Martinez, as which people are expecting... He's not going to win that fight because he's disciplined as well, Haaland, in the way he plays. Come on, how good is he? I mean, it's 13 in nine, but how good is he, do you think? He, he's, he's, the, he's the best in the Premier League. He's only been there two minutes. He's the best in the Premier League, it's as simple as that. Yeah. People want to throw up, oh, but he hasn't done this, he hasn't done that. What you've seen already, the, <clears throat> the all-round game already, he could have played in my time in the 90, 80s and 90s just by his physical presence. And someone that big who can run that quick as well. He's always going to be a problem to set the halves. And he'll be <coughs> resting during the World Cup as well. Mm. Yeah, which is a <coughs> which is a worry as well for you know for other teams. You know, you look at City, they're gonna have quite a few players out there. So <coughs> but excuse me, their key player is going to be sitting at home watching it. Certainly will be. Let's get some more Manchester United uh, build up uh, to the Derby and hear from journalist Andy Mitton. There's been times where Manchester United have gone into every game this year thinking, will this be a turning point in terms of not losing again away from home? Because don't forget, up until Southampton, uh, not that long ago, United lost seven away matches on the bounce and not against particularly strong teams as well. And that, that defeat at Crystal Palace at the end of last season was horrendous. So United are coming up from that now. They've had uh, that win at Southampton... A narrow win at Leicester as well, but still wins, still clean sheets. If United can build on that and perform well, then United fans, and that end will always be sold out, there'll be 3,000 United fans giving it their all there. We'll take, a, we'll take a lot from that. But if United were to win, whoa. I'm smiling at the prospect, but I ain't getting carried away by it because it's not going to be expected. At least he's uh, smiling because he wasn't at the beginning of the season. Uh, Man United won four on the bounce. I mean, obviously, that Liverpool home game was huge, but four on the bounce, including uh, some away wins, which uh, Andy's mentioned about. Uh, look, I think Man United fans going to Sunday, seeing it as a bit of a bonus, don't they? Would snap their hands off for a draw now, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, would do, but... They def yeah, sorry, yeah, they definitely would do. But the main thing for United is to get a performance not to be overwhelmed, not to be overrun, and for City not to go and embarrass them. That's, the, that's the, for, me, for me three things they've, they've got to make sure of it. A performance is so, so important. Off the back of four wins, they need a performance now just to actually to keep themselves in check, not to get embarrassed, not to be outplayed, because they've got something rolling there. You don't want to lose that. The position they're in at the moment, it's, to, it's a peak at the moment for United. 
from the previous season and from the first two games. But, I mean, it's ages ago since I played in the Premier League. I mean, what was it, the 4th of September? Yeah, it's madness, isn't the it? The win against <clears throat> Arsenal. Yeah, it's mad how that's worked out. But, you know, no different City. You look at what, you know, they haven't played for a little while either. Not as long as United, I don't think. But they haven't played. Everyone's almost in the same boat. They've got to go there and try and get something. I would, I would love to see what happened if United went and scored the first goal. That would be interesting. He's got to start the same back four because that's, that's been a strength. Even if they were to get beat, that you've got something going there. You've, they have to keep that. Can't keep messing about a bit. Varane seems to want to play every game now. Martinez has been a revelation since he's arrived. And I think him, he's like, but he is to Varane. He, he is the Ramos of what he had at Real Madrid, that warrior next to him who, lead, who leads the way for him to clear up. Uh, the away team does have a good record in this, by the way. 21 times in the Premier League, the away team has won. Uh, so that is... Uh, um, has got no other fixture as the away team won. It's so much. So that is quite incredible. 21 times. Obviously, Man United were dominant, but it's certainly swung round now. Uh, let's have a quick look at the odds. So Man City are about 1-3. to three. The draws 4-1. to one. Man United 13-2. to two to go and win at the Etihad. We mentioned Haaland, uh, last two home games, scored a hat-trick uh, against Palace and Forest. No player has scored a three consecutive home hat-tricks in the Premier League. Just 6-1 to one to score a hat-trick, 15-8 uh, to eight to score first. Uh, Manchester United will be sweating on the fitness of uh, uh, Marcus Rashford. Uh, Ronaldo's record in the derby is not great, just 3-15. and 15. Yeah, I mean, no, I don't think we'll be seeing Ren <coughs> Ronaldo on the park starting anywhere. I'd be very surprised if he starts. I would, I would say that Rashford will be available to play. Um, be interested in how far Martial is away. Will he be on the bench? You know, I mean, there's been quite, of course, I'd, well, six weeks. Yeah. Six weeks or so for a niggle, it's supposed to be. So, so you, I would believe... Will Anthony he, be involved? Scored in his Premier League debut, of course, against uh, Arsenal? Yes, I think, he, yeah, I think he will. It's the kind of games where you're looking for him. You pay that kind of money for a player. You expect him to play in games like this and you expect him to excel a bit. That's what you pay that kind of money for, big players. For big uh, guns. Rashford is eight to one to score first. Right before I get a prediction of Parks, let's hear from Richard Graves on the Manchester derby. Yeah, there's nothing quite like a Manchester derby to whet the appetite, is there? Two p.m. Sunday afternoon at the Etihad, and two teams banging for me. It has to be said, although I personally feel that it's two teams on slightly different trajectories, because whilst Manchester United unquestionably have had an uptick in form over the past month or so. I still feel that under Eric Ten Hag, this is a team still trying to gel, find a bit of chemistry uh, and find their very best form. So when you have to go to the home of the champions, Manchester City, it's a tough task anyway. When you have to go to Pep Guardiola's side, who are in this kind of form, 14 goals scored from three games, three wins, only two conceded on home soil. This is the tall order. It is a daunting task. You know, I think Manchester City probably have a few problems uh, defensively, having given that they've uh, lost John Stones in all likelihood because he left the game between England and Germany early with an apparent injury the other night. But you look at them in an offensive attacking, attacking perspective and they're almost irresistible. It doesn't matter whether they score early, score late. It doesn't matter whether they go behind by one or two goals. This is a team that just wins right now. And that's thanks in no small part to the form of Erling Haaland. Give him an opportunity. He will score. People ask the question when he arrived from Dortmund in the summer on that big money transfer tag. Would that be a problem? Would it? Would the pace of the Premier League be an issue to adjust to? He's taken to it like a duck to water. And for any defence, it's an issue. For Manchester United, who are still trying to find their best defensive unit, remember they've gone through Harry Maguire, other players, brought them in, drops them out. I, I think this is a real mismatch uh, for me personally. Manchester United have done well once you move, uh, remove the first two games of this season, but they've only scored two goals away from Old Trafford in the Premier League so far. You are going to have to score more than that if you're going to beat Manchester City on their own patch. So personally, I fancy Manchester City and I think it could be a stroll in the park by the end. I don't think this is going to be a good watch for Manchester United fans. You often hear people say that the form book goes out of the window for a local derby and quite often that's true. I don't think that's, that applies this weekend or this Sunday at the Etihad. I like Manchester City to win this 4-1, so a comfortable win for City. I think Erling Haaland inevitably will be 
on the score sheet. If you had to look at one player to, to maybe score a goal for Manchester United, somebody with pace like Jaden Sancho, perhaps, who certainly seems to be improving under Eric Ten Hag, he might be one to look out for there. But yeah, unfortunately for United fans, I think City are the favourites and rightfully so going into this weekend. It certainly are favourites. So, uh, reporter there, Richard Graves, has just called Man City irresistible. He's going for a 4-1 win for Man City. Parks, what are you going for? I've got to be realistic. I want to go with my heart on my sleeve and go all in, but I've got, I've got to say City. I'm going to say City 2-1. City 2-1. But certainly, although they've not played for a while in the Premier League, you're a lot happier with the way Manchester United are playing. Oh, definitely. Definitely, without a doubt, they're a much improved from those first two games, much improved from last season. But you can still go to City and play well and come away being beaten 3-4-0. That's the way City are at the moment in time. Right, two crackers then. We've got the North London derby at 12.30 on Saturday and then the Manchester derby 2 o'clock on Sunday. Right, let's go through the other fixtures then. Bournemouth, Brentford. How do you see that? And give us a prediction. Bournemouth, Brentford. <clears throat> Brentford have done well since Scott Parker's gone. They've picked up a bit, I should say. Um, I just think, ball. I'm going to go away win. Yeah, I away think. win. Come on then. So Bournemouth are home. Bournemouth, Brentford gives a score. I'm going to go Brentford to win 2 0. Yes, they lost to Arsenal last time out in the 3 0. But I think Brentford are not bad this term. I think this is an interesting one. I think Palace. <laughs> are not bad, have just not been getting the results. Palace at home to Chelsea. Graham Potter in charge, of course, at Chelsea now. Chelsea can't score goals. They're still struggling to score goals. <clears throat> I'm sure the time he's had in his... In little, the players he's had the time to work with while um, everyone's been away, he would have put some of his... Their ball retention will be better. They'll move the ball quicker, but they still can't score goals. Palace at home. I'm going to... I'm a, I like Palace at home. I... Enjoy going there and watching them play. I'm going to go a sneaky Palace win, 2-1. 2-1 Palace. That is uh, Paul Parker's prediction. Uh, right, Fulham, you're one of your old clubs. Going great guns in sixth position. Mm. They entertain Newcastle. And Newcastle are just probably drawing too many games, aren't they? They are, <clears throat> they are but they're 100% better than what they were <laughs> you know, previously. They have, they have improved. There's more following them. Um, they've got a little bit of air of confidence about them as well, but winning is a problem. I think you look at Mitrovic, Mitrovic is going to want to prove a point as well against um, Newcastle. I've got, to, I've got to go with Fulham. What's going? I'm going to, they score goals, don't they? they um, the new striker scoring. I'm going to go Fulham. I'm going to give them, I'm going to give them three-one. Three-one Fulham. Then Liverpool at home to Brighton. Liverpool. Of course, last time out uh, in the Premier League, it was a while ago, it was that tough draw at Everton. Yeah. Um, <coughs> home win? I'm going to go home win. But if Graham Potter had been there, I'd have been maybe a little bit more favourable to Brighton. Now they've lost him and it's a new regime in now, but they're going to still play in the same way. That ain't going to change. That's instilled right the way through the club, <coughs> that, um, the way they play. Yeah. Liverpool to win 2-0. 2-0 Liverpool. Uh, also at three o'clock on Saturday, uh, Southampton versus Everton. Uh, Everton are in the 13th, Southampton 14th. And, um, well, I think Frank Lampard's turned things around. They're looking a lot better defensively. Well, that's the bit. That's, what, that's the little bit where they got there. They're hard to break down. You, you never know, there could be a game come up and they could just collapse. But at the moment, they've just dug in and got results. Uh, Everton to win 1-0. Everton to away win. That's what Parks is going for. And then the 5.30 kickoff on Saturday, West Ham versus Wolves. Uh, West Ham, just four points. Yeah, it hasn't been good. They haven't started well. There was a big high from last season. Individuals, a lot of their key individuals haven't performed so far. David Moyes has got to get away from what he saw as his team. He loves continuity. Great strength to have, but sometimes... You have to build within and have to maybe move, make one or two changes sometimes and you maybe have to spice up that midfield a bit and maybe leave out Socek. But um, they need to spice it up. He needs to spice it up because the fans are getting a little bit itchy now. They're not sure, you know, questioning David Moyes now. Part and parcel of football, isn't it? After the good, it turns to bad sometimes. But that game has got everything says to me, a draw. I'm going to go 1-1. 
1-1. Right, two more games to speak about before we finish. Uh, 4.30 on Sunday, Leeds at home to Aston Villa. I'm going to go Leeds to win. I just think they've got something about them that always leads at home anyway. It's a biggish game against Villa. Important that Leeds get some points on the ball because their performances haven't been that bad. I'm going to go Leeds to win that 2-0. And then a huge game for Leicester, the only team in the Premier League uh, without a win. And this is uh, 20th versus 19th. Leicester versus Nottingham Forest. I've got to go with the way things are going. Forest have hit a wall after that incredible start. I'm going to go Leicester to get their first win, 2-0. 2-0, right. I'm just going to recap uh, Paul Parker's selections very quickly. So, in the North London derby, he's going for 3-1 Arsenal. Then he's going for Brentford to win 2-0 at Bournemouth. Uh, Palace versus Chelsea, he's going for a Palace 2-1 win. Fulham home win 3-1 against Newcastle. Is going for 2-0 Liverpool, 1-0 Everton away win at Southampton. A 5.30 kickoff, one all between West Ham and Wolverhampton. Wanderers in Manchester Derby. He's going for the home team, Man City, 2-1 win. Then he's going for Leeds, 2-0. And then on Monday night, Leicester, 2-0. They are Paul Parker's predictions. So, it's a Manchester Derby. We've got the North London Derby as well. Ten Premier League fixtures to get stuck into. Thanks for coming in, Parks. Enjoyed your company. And please, if you're having a bet this weekend, please keep it fun and gamble responsibly. We'll see you next week.